Hello, and welcome to this lesson on solving inequalities using multiply or divide. In the previous lesson, we looked at solving inequalities using only addition and subtraction. We saw it was pretty much 100% the same as, using, as solving an equation with the additional step of graphing the inequality at the end. That's going to be mostly true here, but we are going to run into one of those differences, those little tricks that's going to happen in this lesson. Uh, so the central question says, how do I solve inequalities using multiplication or division? Did you know that inequalities are used outside of school almost as much as equations? Like, that's because rarely are things equal. Sometimes it's nice to know when things are equal, and sometimes it's useful, but things like income, how much money you make, um, cost of phone companies, calories eaten, stuff like that. Like each of these can be represented in an inequality when comparing differences. Um, I mean, I mean, calories eaten. You could even go something as simple as like, if I eat 100 blueberries versus 100 um, potato chips. And my handwriting's incredibly sloppy today, but I mean, how many calories? What's the difference? Which one's bigger? Which one's smaller? I, I mean, and I can, if if we knew how many calories were in a blueberry and how many calories are in a potato chip, we could actually do that. Okay, so things are rarely equal. A lot of times they're they're different, and that's when inequality shines. Okay, so it's same vocabulary. A math problem where one side is not, or the two sides are not equal. But I also have that circle type box again that I would like us to. Can you fill this out from memory? We did it. We used these circles a bunch of times yesterday. Now I'll, I'll get you started. There is a circle like this, and there's a circle like that. That one's solid and filled in. All right. So see if you can quickly throw in which symbols go with which inequality or with with which yeah which dot goes with which inequality and it should be this is the less than greater than this is the less than or equal to greater than or equal to and that's the difference so now we're just gonna jump pretty much right into it and we're gonna start solving some inequalities so like before, um, if we were solving this, if this was an equation, if we had our line down here on the equal sign, the way we'd solve this equation to get this variable by itself, we need to get rid of this divide by b, divide by 8. So we would multiply by 8. And that's the same. The multiply by 8 and divide by 8 are opposite operations. They cancel out. b is less than or equal to um, 13 times 8 is 104. Then we'd graph that inequality. So I'm going to put 104. So I'm labeling, labeling every other line like I like to do. My inequality would have a solid dot at 104 because, well, it has the, it's or equal to, it has the little line underneath, which means that is a solution. And then we'll be shading less than. Looks like an L. It's less than. It's also pointing to the left. And those are the numbers that are less than. And there we have it. That's the first of these problems. Okay. Second one is also fairly easy. There's not a whole lot to this one. So we would start by dividing by 7 on both sides. These guys cancel. W. And that is, I believe, 12, but I'm going to double check it. Yep. Now I notice my variable's on the wrong side, so I'm going to flip this inequality so my variable's on the correct side. And that also means we change the direction of the inequality symbol, so instead of being a greater than, it is now a less than. And graph, negative 12 negative 10, negative 14. Remember, these numbers are bigger. Negative 10 is bigger than negative 12.
I'm getting a hollow dot at negative 12. There's no or equal to sign. And again, I'm going to shade less than to the left. L less than left. Okay, two down. Hopefully everything's been pretty good so far and there's no major complaints. Now letter C here is the first problem that we're going to have one of these differences between equations and inequalities. So if you're working too far ahead and you get to letter C, uh, you might want to back up here. So we're going to divide by negative 4 like we would normally do. And therein lies the problem. There is a rule with inequalities that says if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative like we just did right here because this thing the thing we're getting rid of this thing right here is, is negative on both sides we're dividing by negative 4 on both sides in the middle of the problem we need to change the direction of the inequality I'll repeat that again because that is very important and it's a place that a lot of students make mistakes and they forget about it. So when you're solving an inequality, when you multiply or divide by a negative, multiply or divide by a negative, you change the direction of the inequality in the middle of the problem. And I've had students ask why, and I don't have a, a fantastic reason other than if you don't, it doesn't work. For example, and I'll, I'll put this back in a second. So let's say we didn't change this. So this says my answer is any number that's less than or equal to negative 4. So if I picked, say, negative 7, negative 7 is less than negative 4. Does negative 7 make this true on this side negative 4 times by negative 7 is positive 28 is positive 28 less than negative 16 no but if we changed this way it should be when we change the direction of that inequality like that now it's a positive a positive 7 would work positive 7 times by negative 4 would be a pos uh, negative 28 negative 28 is less than negative 16 so the reason why you have to change the inequality is because if you don't you're gonna get a wrong answer now the graph so let me get rid of there you go extra junk negative 4, negative 2, negative 6. Solid dot at negative 4. And we are shading to the right. We are shading greater than. This is now a greater than symbol. So we're shading greater than to the right. Now, you might be asking yourself, but minute, wait, wait, wait. In the previous problem, letter B, didn't we divide by a negative? See, look, I, 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 was, I divided negative 84 by 7. The difference is the thing we did on both sides. On both sides, we divided by a positive 7. So no, we didn't divide by negative. I don't care that this number was negative to begin with. What matters is the thing that you're doing on both sides. So if I divided by a negative 7, that's when we would change the direction. Or if I would multiply by a negative thing that's when we'd change the direction. Letter D. Solve the equation. To get rid of that divide by 7, I'm going to multiply by 7 on both sides. D is greater than 21. Nothing wonky happened here. I didn't have to multiply or divide by a negative at all. So then the graph, 21, 22, 23, and that would be a 19. I would put a hollow dot at 21 because it's just greater than. 
And because it is a greater than, I'm shading to the right. And there we have it. So this thing right here is really the new thing in this lesson that it's kind of a trick. It, it, it's hidden. It's not obvious when you're doing it. Now, these two problems are for you. And I will tell you, in both of these problems, you will be multiplying or dividing by a negative. Okay? So I want you to be careful when you're solving the problems to look for um, that step. And then make sure you change the direction of the inequality appropriately. Okay? Go ahead and pause the video. Do these two on your own right now. When you're ready to continue, hit play. And we'll go through it together. All right, so let me change to red here. Actually, I'll, I'll leave him big and red. All right, so you needed to divide by negative five on both sides here. This then cancels, and D is now less than or equal to negative eight and the reason why we change that to a less than is because right here we divided by a negative you also should have divided by a negative so now check did you change the direction of this inequality if you didn't how that's going to affect um your answer well first off your inequality you're facing the wrong way which you go that's it's not really a big deal except on your graph you've now completely shaded the wrong side of the inequality. So you should be shading everything less than negative eight, everything to the left of, oops, left of negative eight, which would be all of these guys. If you forgot to change that, you shaded everything on the wrong side. So you have the complete wrong answers, which is kind of a much bigger deal than just, oh, it's the wrong symbol. letter F. To solve this, I'm going to multiply by negative five on both sides. That is the opposite operation of this divide by negative five. Now, we did multiply by a negative five, which means we are going to change the direction of the inequality in the middle of the problem. And then the rest of the problem is just the same. So we are going to negative 45, negative 43. Now, I, I usually count by ones, but you can count by things like fives and tens. Um, negative 45, negative 35, negative 55. I'd be counting by fives. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. You can do that too. There's nothing wrong with counting by something other than ones. It's just, I like to because it's quick and easy. I'm going to show you can. Either way, you should have a hollow dot at 40, negative 45. There's no or equal to. It's just the greater than. And you should be shading greater than to the right. And there we have it. So those are the first two that you hopefully tried on your own. And hopefully you were successful. Two more. Now, I'm not going to tell you if you have to change the direction of the inequalities here. I want you to try to solve them on your own. When you're ready, continue. Hit play, and we will go through them together. All right. Letter G. Divide by three on both sides. These guys cancel. T and negative four now did i change do i need to change the direction of the inequality no because you did not divide by a negative you divided by positive three although you do need to change the inequality because your variable is on the wrong side there we go so there's actually been two times now two different reasons why we changed the direction of the inequality one is if we would divide by a negative we didn't have to here. That's one reason why you change the direction of the equality. The other is if your variable's on the wrong side. 
Now it's possible to have both of those things in one problem, which means you'd like change the direction of the inequality and then have to change it back. But you don't know until you go through and solve the problem. And as I've been talking, I've been graphing as well. So it does need a hollow dot at negative four shaded to the right. It is a greater than now, not a less than. Letter H. I'm going to multiply by four, multiply by four. X is greater than or equal to negative eight. We did not multiply by a positive, I'm sorry, multiply by a negative. We multiplied by positive four on each side. So we do not change the inequality. The variables on the correct side, everything is good. Negative eight, negative six, negative 10, solid dot at negative eight, shaded greater than, which is to the right. And there you go. Hopefully you got the same things we got. Now, if you'd like to try these problems quickly, you may. Um, and pause the video and try them. I am going to do just the graphs of them. If your graph is the same as my graph, then we're the same. We got the same answers and we're both good. Um, so go ahead. Pause the video, give them a shot right now. They're all one step, so they should be very quick to do. All right, this first one, you would need to change the direction of the inequality. You get X is now less than negative 48. Now, I'm gonna be a bad example. I'm gonna do a junky graph, which means I'm just gonna put the one number in the middle, hollow dot, shaded this way. You would want to have your number line more filled in. I'm going for quickness here. More. I'm going for more quick than correct. Um, number five, I'm not sure what seven times by 1.6 is. All right, so now the solution here would be m is now greater than negative 11.2. I changed the direction of the inequality because I'd have to multiply by, pot, by a negative seven, which gives me negative 11.2 hollow dot shaded to the right. Number six would be just V is greater than or equal to nine. Nothing special happened there. You just divide by five. So there's our nine solid dot shaded to the right. Last one would be give us N is greater than negative four. And we change the direction of this inequality quality because we had to divide by a negative. So negative four here, and then we get a hollow dot and we're shaded greater than. Okay, so it was a very, very quick skim through, mostly a check for yourself to see if you're on the right track. And if you got multiple of those wrong, you might wanna go back and rewatch that first part of the video again. Because we're moving on to applications. Your school wants to buy lollipops as a fundraiser. They cost 50 cents each. Write and solve an inequality that shows how many lollipops could the school buy if they have $350 to spend. So they want to buy a bunch of lollipops. Maybe they're buying them for 50 cents and then selling them for a dollar or something. Okay, so how many lollipops could they buy if they have $350 to spend? Okay. So, hmm. well, there's your lollipops, and they cost 50 cents each. So I'm going to take the lollipops times by 50 cents, and then they have $350 to spend. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to spend all $350. we are not going to do that. I mean... Could they spend a hundred dollars? Yeah, yeah. They don't have to spend all three fifty, so they're going to spend less than or equal to three hundred fifty. Now, this is kind of like your verbal model a little bit. Um, all I need to do to turn this into an actual equation is change the word "lolly" into maybe big old L. Solve the equation. 
divide by 0.5 on both sides. And L is now less than or equal to uh, 350 divided by 0.5 is 700. So they could buy any from 700 down. Lollipops are less than or equal to 700. So, yeah. Fairly straightforward. A lumber mill is cutting up a tree. How big of a tree would they need if they want to cut it into sections five feet long and they want to have more than 10 sections? Okay, so they're taking a tree. They're cutting it into sections that are five feet long or maybe I'll leave it up here. Five, 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 whatever. And they want to have more than 10 sections. So tree, they're going to cut it into sections five foot long. They're dividing it into five foot long sections. And it says they want to have more than 10 sections. They want this to be greater than 10. That really is the verbal model. And all I need to do is go like that. And I got myself an inequality. And if I multiply by 5 on both sides, T is greater than 50, which you probably figure that out because you know five foot sections to get 10, you'd need to be 50 feet, so it'd need to be bigger than 50 feet. Okay, so, but these are fairly straightforward. These are all just one step, so I can't make them too terribly complex yet. Um, they'll get more complex later on. So the tree would have to be bigger than 50 foot long. Each blue rupee Link collects is worth five. How many blue rupees could Link collect to be able to buy the Kokiri shield that costs 41 rupees? Okay, I made this one a little bit more complex and it's not 100% accurate because the shield actually costs only 40. Um, but, I mean, rupees, each rupee is worth five. So each rupee times by five. So like one blue rupee is worth five. If I put a two rupees in here, that'd be worth 10, okay? And he wants to be able to buy that shield that costs 41. Now, would you want your money to be bigger than 41? The money you have be bigger than 41, less than 41, equal to 41? Well, we'd like bigger than or equal to, right? So we would divide by five on both sides. The number of rupees would be greater than or equal to eight point two. Now, both actually, as I was thinking about it, this problem and the previous problem, there's a slight issue because first off, Link can't just get point two rupees. Like th this comes as a whole thing. You can't just get that. So. We got bigger than 8.2. We would kind of have to round that up, wouldn't we? So he would actually need to get greater than or equal to 9 rupees. 8's not enough. 9 would actually work, though. Okay, so that's a situation where having a decimal answer doesn't quite make sense. Actually, back up here. If they wanted to have more than 10 sections, we said it needed to be bigger than 50 feet. Yeah, but... To get an 11th section more than 10, you wouldn't just be bigger than 50. You'd actually need to round that up a little bit, and your tree would have to be bigger than 50, or bigger than or equal to 55 feet, right? If, if we just stopped it, oh, it's 51 foot long, then your last section is going to, it's not going to be five foot long. It's going to be this little tiny little piece. So making sense of the situation kind of makes a deal, making sure your answer does actually answer the question. And I was, I mean, as I was scrolling away from this question, I was like, man, something doesn't quite seem right. I think that's what it was. It was it was this right here. The fact that that's just going to give us, I mean, this would give us 10 sections. Now we have more than 10 sections. Here, 8.2 blue rupees would be enough, but you can't just get 0 0.2 blue rupees, so you'd have to round it up to nine or more. Summary. 
How do you know when you have to switch the direction of the inequality? We talked about it kind of extensively through the lesson. We have, we've learned two different reasons now. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can answer that. So the two times you switch the direction of the inequality, first is if the variable is on the wrong side. I'm just going to put on the right. So if the variable is on the wrong side, you have to change the whole, you flip the whole problem to put the variable on the left. And the other is when you multiply or divide by a negative. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching this lesson on multiplying and dividing inequalities. Uh, we're going to extend this lesson in the next lesson to talk about multi-step inequalities. It's going to get harder. Don't worry. Um, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, toodles.